Hi, and welcome to 3DMotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this particular Tips and Tricks tutorial, we'll take a look at some lighting in Maya. Right now, this is the Maya interface. Uh, if I hold down the space bar real quick, you can see I have a scene set up. Here are four, four viewports. I'm just going to go ahead and work with this one. I create a quick little wall just so we'd have something to work from. All right, so let's assume uh, that we're going to do a quick render of this particular view. Okay, I'm just going to click that little uh, clipboard. This clipboard right here, it looks like a movie marquee kind of clipboard. Just renders the current frame. Well, we only have one thing in the scene, and this is only one frame, so there it is. That's what it looks like. That's it with just the regular uh, high-quality rendering. Now, if I click on the default rendering, you notice how it looks like the model has now changed because I actually have, uh, let me take the wireframe off, I actually have what looks like some shading now on this. So if we go for a render on that, you can see it's affected a little bit more. Okay, But if we go back to our high quality renderer and re-render, it actually doesn't change anything. The renderer for this, at least for how we look at it, only affects the viewport itself, what we're looking at in the viewport, okay, just for our purposes. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of the, the lights that I would use in Maya for uh, different uh, lighting effects, etc. All right, in order to create a light, we need to go to the Create tab. And as you can see, there's this Lights tab right here. Uh, this little panel right here, you see it has this little uh, tear away. That means we can literally click on it and we now have our own little docked uh, tab right here. This allows us to create lights right there and then on the fly. The first light, ambient light, is basically kind of an omni light. It's kind of a diffuse light. If we just go ahead and click on it, you can't see it right now. I'm going to go ahead and, and put the move tool on and I'm going to pull it forward and then pull it up. Okay. Now this particular light basically is going in all directions. Let's go ahead and set it to our high quality light, a high quality render, I'm sorry. This basically is going in all directions. Let's go to the attribute editor. We're gonna go ahead and check the ambient light. Uh, we right now have it as a white color and the intensity as is at 1.0, which is what it should be. This is the different attribute editors. We have channel box, attribute editor, to turn turn off this this panel here, you just have to click on the attribute edit again. So there we go. We have our little scene. I'm just going to click that back on. Let's go ahead and do a quick render and see what sort of lighting we get out of this. Let's go ahead and open up our render area and go ahead and re-render. Okay. So as you can see, we now have almost no shadowing in the scene at all because the omni has basically become, or the ambient light has basically be the omni light. It, it's shedding light on everything as a diffuse light. All right? So that could come in handy as a base. It, it's what might be like like a, 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 uh, a skylight in 3D Studio Max, possibly. You know, it's, it's one of those things that could certainly work as such. If I actually move this down so it's interspersed between uh, the floor and re-render, it actually affects where the lighting sets up. You notice it's no longer quite so flushed out. It actually uh, is because it sinks into the actual floor. We're getting a different lighting effect. The same thing is, is I can I can move it back in this direction and move it up here and then move it back a little bit more till it's almost cut out. And if we do a re-render on that, we get a different lighting effect. Check that out. So, and actually, a really nice way you could uh, set this up to have what looks like a, a bit of a, a cone light or a spotlight. Let's do a quick render there. There you go. Interesting. But you can see that the, sh the shadowing falls off, the lighting falls off. So you, you can get some interesting effects with that. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. Let's go ahead and try a directional light. Now the directional light is basically our sunlight. Okay. What you can't see, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm going to go hit R to scale it and I'm going to scale it up uniformly. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and move it up. Now you can see it's, it's basically four different arrows. It's saying, hey, this is the direction that the sunlight is going to be. 
So in this case, let's go ahead and move this over a little bit. We're going to move it up, and then we're also going to angle it. Let's go ahead and do a rotate, which is E. I'm going to angle this down and around a little bit. So it's something like that. Okay. Let's try a quick render on that. Oh, nice. It pulls that out really well and puts a lot of shading and shadowing down on the floor. We can turn on and angle this a little bit more and re-render. And it actually changes. You see how it changed that lighting out? Again, something something that we can play with as we need to. We can create a point light. And because the last command was rotate, it's ready to rotate. So we're just going to move it, which is W. I'm just going to move it up or move it forward, and then I'm going to move it up. Let's take a quick gander what that does. All right, so as you can see, this, this just kind of adds a, a band of light. You can see it already fades off. It's not a strong light. It starts falling off really quickly. We're going to go ahead and create a spotlight, which is basically what it says it is. It's a spotlight. As you can see, we can pull it back. There's the cone, and then it has a little arrow that's indicating this is where the light is going, so it's directional. Let's go ahead and take a quick gander at the spotlight. Now, as you can see there, it's kind of small. You can't see anything else. And that's because it's also based on our size of it. So if we hit R to scale it up, we can scale it up. Let's do a quick render on that. Okay, that brings it up. And then also, you can adjust the drop-off. Let's go ahead and do a default render. Let's see if that actually changes what we're doing. I just want to see something real quick. Oh, and see, you can see it actually fell off to the point that it actually faded off into blackness. So we'd probably want to change the intensity on this. Maybe turn it up to two. Let's do a quick render. Oh, and as you can see, that actually pulls it out. It actually makes it a hotter spot. So we'd probably want to use a couple different lights for that. All right. We then have the area light. The area light is basically, uh, imagine if you will, it's like a 2D plane. As you can see, here it is. There's the 2D plane. And it's basically as if you were projecting like a rectangular light effect. Let's go ahead and scale that up and do a quick render of what that looks like. As you can see, very intense very sharp. We can actually move this around. We can change the intensity. Let's say 0.5. Let's go ahead and do a rotate, which is E. I'm just going to rotate that down. All right. Let's go ahead and move that W. We're going to move it over. And let's rotate it around a little bit. There we go. All right. Let's render that, see what that looks like. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. Cool. Okay. And obviously, if we move it a little farther back, we can get some differing effects. And of course, if we scale it up, it's going to change how that looks as well. As you can see, a lot of light in this area, and it's a nice fall off. It's good light. Good light to use. All right. So let's go ahead, and we're going to hide that. And I'm going to bring in a character. Let's go ahead and go back to our high quality render just so we can see the normal maps on it reading through very nicely. Okay. Let's go ahead and at least for right now I actually want to try creating the ambient light. I'm going to go ahead and do an R. I'm going to scale it up. And a W and we're going to move it out. And let's move it up. This is basically going to be just uh, like an Omni. We're just going to move it around as a key or as a main line. Let's see. Let's do a quick render. There you go. Okay. Nice. Simple, but nice. It works. Let's go ahead and create a directional light. I do want to get a, a type of sun in there. I'm going to move this, scale it up and move it over. Let's go ahead and do a quick rotate. 
and rotate down. And I'm also going to scale it up because it's a little small. Let's just see what that's looking like. Do a quick render. Oh, there you go. Nice. All right. So if we look at that as a key light, and this is a fill light, we really only need one more light, basically like a, a spotlight type of thing. Let's go ahead and just do that as a point light. Or I tell you what, in fact, what we'll do is we're just going to copy this. We're just going to do Control D, and then we're going to move it. As you can see, it made a copy, and we're just going to move it over. Let's go ahead and do it over here. And I'm going to pull it up. Let's go ahead and change the intensity. I'm going to change that to, say, 3. And I'm going to change the color. Just for now, I want something a little on the blue. Not a hard blue, but a kind of a light blue. There we go. Let's see what that looks like. Just a basic three-point light kind of thing. Oh, wow. Very nice. Very nice. I like that. Actually, I like that a lot. Let's go ahead and pull that back a little bit, actually. And we'll go ahead and zoom in again. And do another quick render. Very nice. Now you can actually change the size of the render as well. You know, right now it's uh, it's a, a particular size. And you can do that by either going to the window, rendering editors, and render settings. Okay. Or you could have done that by clicking on this little icon here, which would have brought you up the same thing. Okay, for this is you get two different tabs. This is the common and the Maya software. And since we're using the Maya software, we're just going to stick with the common. If we scroll down, this is the size right now. It's a 640 by 480. Let's go ahead and, and make it uh, taller than it is wide. But let's go to 1024 and 768. You go ahead and close that, and let, now let's go ahead and re-render. Oh, good. So that gives us a lot more space, which means we can zoom in a lot farther. It's going to, yeah, great, great way to to set the the model up. We probably want to just do a a uh, framing. If we go over to our view down to camera settings to resolution gate that's the sa safe thing as safe frame in 3d studio max so if you click resolution gate you can see this is it cuts off the area so we can actually see what we're looking to do so we can zoom in we know we we don't need to render outside of that so there you go you can start rendering it up unfortunately it comes in huge <laughs> i'm just going to scale this down just so you guys can see it so a great way to just set up a quick three-point light system so we can turn around and render out. The nice thing is, is from this view, we can turn around and grab any one of these and make modifications to the strength of the light, uh, the intensity. Uh, we do want to make sure, like for shadows, we want to make sure uh, that maybe ray trace shadows are on. Maybe, you know, maybe not. Depends on what you want to do. Uh, but it's very simple. Just you have your key light, a fill light and a backlight and then do some rendering just simple it's a quick introduction again it's, once again it's really hard to take everything in there's so many different things you can do but this gives you an idea of where you can go with this and how you can turn around and then add on to it as you're working with it anyway i hope this has been fun for you my name is stephen g wells and this has been 3dmotive.com thanks very much for watching